This is Nitin Dahad at EE Times, and I am speaking to Balaji Bhakta, who's the CEO and founder of Ventana Micro. Hello, Balaji, how are you? Hi, Nitin. Good to see you again. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. We're meeting here at the RISC-5 Summit, and um, we haven't caught up for a couple of years now, maybe, and you've been busily working away uh, on on your architecture and your you know, customers. So tell us a little bit about the progress and you've also got to an uh, announcement you had here. So Thank you, Nathan. Yes, indeed, it's been a while and great to see you again. Yeah. And yeah, Ventana's been making tremendous progress for the past couple of years. Two years ago, we came out of Stealth, yeah. uh, almost two and a half years ago. Yeah. We, last year, we announced Veron V2. Yeah. And uh, in Europe, we launched the Veron accelerated version of the architecture. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've come a long way in being able to get the entire platform we put together right. uh, driven through market adoption in various in markets. Yeah. And I'm really delighted to tell you we have some serious traction mm -hmm. in uh, Europe, Americas, and Asia. And not only have we been able to get customers to think about this in a positive way, but we've been able to get them to move towards actually building platforms with our technology and IP. Okay. So, yeah. And, and I, I know when I've... Um Talked to you in the past, I've challenged your serious traction. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what that serious traction means, uh, I think, uh, particularly on the data center and server market. A great question. I, you know, in the end, you got to quantify it. Yeah. We have customers that are spending a um, serious amount of budget. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about, you know, triple digit millions and being able to build mm -hmm. their own server class platform using Ventana Veyron uh, architecture. They, the key impetus for them is developing a platform that's going to be not only matching the performance of your legacy architectures, but it gives them the ability to bring in the accelerated compute element on top of that. So that's yeah. what gets them all really excited. And yes, serious traction means we have paying customers who are paying tens of millions of dollars, not okay. a small amount, okay. and putting their own uh, product roadmap firmly behind our architecture. Now, tell us a little bit about that architecture. I mean, it's the CPU and NPU clusters uh, doing the, the various bits of the uh, accelerated compute. Indeed. So if you look at it, um, our view has been, while doing all of the heavy lifting on our part, Ventana, build the entire platform, but allow customers to customize it using their own specific value add. So to do that, we needed to build an entire end-to-end processor, processor cluster, cache, memory hierarchy, chiplet architecture, the whole nine yards, and then yeah. allow for domain-specific acceleration capability to be infused into it, uh, not only at the hardware level, system level, but also at the software compiler toolchain level. So we've done all of that work, and we did this using chiplets. Yeah. And chiplets being UCIE-based, uh, data to interconnect technology is the medium of that physical connectivity, but everything else we've already been able to bake into our architecture. So if anyone could build an SOC, yeah. they can easily adopt our technology, mm -hmm. do 15, 20% of incremental work, and bring out their own highly customized SOC that's, that's ready for not only traditional compute, traditional compute with AI capabilities going forward. Okay. Now, what kind of status quo is this challenging? Because, I, I mean, I don't want you to sort of say about com yeah, necessarily competition, but what is, what is it that's different to what's out there in the market at the moment, and is it replacing or, or supplementing what, what people are using already? Uh, great question. So if you look at uh, the this AI market is such a huge, explosive area. The way you bring in AI into the enterprise space is yeah. so far through plug-in PCIe cards. Yeah. Or a combination of that plus FPGAs, or you know, th those kinds of implementations. So you have a base um, system, and then you add capability by plugging in um, that AI capability through an accelerator card. That is extremely expensive. Yeah. And the moment you're doing compute in two different domains, one on the host side, another one over PCIe on the AI. So there's a lot of scatter gather, and that, that kind of becomes extremely inefficient. What we've done is to replace that status quo by having this easy to bring in and integrate AI capabilities through chiplet architecture. And to do this AI, you need to give customer a basic building block. Um, mm. What are the building blocks of AI? We all know it's just you know, compute to do the prep and load, store, et cetera, but then the actual crunching, the, the, compute, the computational side is going to be matrix multiplier coming yeah. in different flavors for different applications. Yeah. 
we give customers the granular approach to be able to right size the ratio between scalar and matrix multiplier and bring it in the right performance power uh, envelope that they care about for you know, enterprise training could be hundreds of billions of parameters. Okay. But then when you go to um, inference, it's a totally different way yeah. of doing things. The data formats are different. Mm. The throughput requirements are different. So if you can give a fabric-based granular architecture that allows customers to scale based on the specific application while preserving all of the investment that they make uh, by allowing, basically, you, you have a... Uh, a layer of abstraction that allows them to scale quite nicely while maintaining application forward yeah. compatibility. And, and are we also addressing some of the challenges with uh, the, 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 the communication between the, uh, yeah, the, the bandwidth issues and the en energy consumption issues, I guess? They're the big things that everybody's worried about these days. Absolutely. Bandwidth is a huge issue. Yeah. <clears throat> the best way to do that is to, first of all, reduce redundant data movement. Okay. Make sure that the data remains where it is, and then the compute acts on the data without having to move the data back and forth via you know, PCIe, yeah. Ethernet, those kinds of things. So if you can come up with a data-centric architecture or memory-centric architecture by compute coming in mm. uh, through some kind of coherent uh, you know, domain that yeah. covers all of these elements in one seamless uh, domain, yeah. that's what we've done with our platform architecture. So when you do that, you're not moving a lot of it's power save. So basically, at the workload level, yeah. you get maximum power efficiency by avoiding redundant data movement. Yeah. And also, um, you talked about um, energy and then... Uh, uh, energy and uh, bandwidth. Basically. Bandwidth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So bandwidth is another question, because yeah. when, you, when you move a lot of data from compute to uh, an accelerator back and forth, bandwidth is nothing but, you know, uh, that's a choke point, basically. Yeah, exactly. By some measures, people would say, I've seen some papers, or I've read somewhere that says, even with the most advanced AI architecture that customers can deploy today, yeah. their, their AI uh, accelerators, or GPUs, are suboptimally used because yeah. they're being put to, uh, put, they're actually waiting for the data to arrive to them. Exactly. So that yeah. bandwidth is a huge issue. So if you can solve it by using chiplet-based architecture, UCIE <clears throat> gives you a good, good way to do it. And then if you can lay on top of that some kind of uh, coherency protocol that allows, like I said, okay. computes act on the data uh, in a, a seamless fashion, yeah. you avoid that bandwidth being a huge problem. Uh, in some instances, you know, you may have to deal with a HBM kind of memory yeah. uh, where, you know, they're all hosted. So there are many, in our platform architecture, we have granular options even for memory scalability. Okay. Now, uh, at the RISC V Summit here, I think what you've done is you've announced that um, you... Uh, are going to be shipping uh, the Veron uh, V2, V1, V2? V2. Uh, V2. So tell us a little bit about that announcement. Yeah, so Veron V2 really are, you know, th that's going to be the flagship uh, RISC V processor in the industry uh, that's going to be shipping in real silicon. As you hope. As, as I hope, <laughs> yes. But, you know, as I told you, our customers who are paying tens of millions of dollars have already made the bet that that is worthy of their spending and their yeah. product, you know, serious product plans. So it is expected to ship next year, mm. and um, it's going to be in a four nanometer process, okay. and highly optimized toward the kinds of workloads we talked about, mm. and the entire platform is going to ship as a chiplet, yeah. and then we have reference designs that tie them all together for different types of uh, configurations, entry-level configuration, mid-level configuration, high-level configuration. Simply, you have to add the number of compute chiplets and then address the memory and I.O. ratio between them. And then again, packaging uh, has to be thought through. Um, for simple implementations, you could go with organic substrate, yeah. where you have a uh, lot more memory bandwidth type of cons uh, constraints or considerations. Mm -hmm. you, you may have to consider um, uh, advanced packaging options. So we are working with package vendors that are able to do all of this. Right. And a lot of them are part of our ecosystem, too. So all of this, Nitin, you know this. You can't just cook, uh, cook up something in isolation and expect this thing to work in yep. the entire you know, disparate ecosystem, somehow figuring pieces out. We have to work together as a unit, almost like multiple BUs working under one umbrella. Mm. That's the concept we've taken. And all the ecosystem partners have been great about uh, cooperating, collaborating, and make sure that the, uh, you know, the end solution is going to be working as intended. All right. What's next for Ventana? Uh, you I mean, know, you're, you're, I think you're at a stage where I think we've covered you a little bit here. 
you know, funding and you know, growing architecture, now customer, what's next? Uh, listen, you've been, you've been the first one we've been talking to about a lot of these key events. One of the first yeah. ones been uh, sharing our progress with. It's gratifying. Um, you've seen us go from being a stealth mode company, come out of stealth, mm. and talk about, oh, we're going to do high performance risk by course to delivering complete platform. Now we're on V2 in real silicon next year. And there are customers who already started building platforms with mm. our hardware. Next thing is scale customer yeah. engagements uh, yeah. in all key geographies. And then once you scale them, then go into um, that revenue ramp mode. And more than anything else, successfully deploy the next generation accelerated compute applications on our architecture as you know customers see fit. So that's Silicon is just one, one side of the, as you know, a silicon yeah. system, but then truly porting all those workloads. Most of that work, by the way, yeah. the, most of the work is already happening mm. because we have this thing running on emulators. And it's pretty much the exact design that they're going to see in silicon, except that it's going to be really fast. So they're able to move their software onto that platform, running their actual uh, accelerated compute workloads, like uh, traditional mm. uh, applications gaining AI capabilities, they're beginning to test all of them on our emulator. So when it comes to real silicon, uh, they're going to see the benefits. Uh, first, as you said, power optimization is going to be a killer uh, first advantage that they're going to see. Next is uh, you know, optimal cost points. Mm -hmm. And then anything that they deem proprietary, they're going to keep it for themselves. So that scaling that and growing revenue is the next phase. So, I mean, scaling is actually quite a challenge because you've got an incumbent and you know, there's a lot of market traction for some of the others. So um, what's going to be your biggest challenge for scaling? You know what? If you go head on with an existing player, uh, it's not going to be uh, easy. Yeah. And as you know, I've been in the industry for about three decades. We've done yeah. this. I've done many startups. So the way you work on is there are some applications that are going to be extremely well suited for yeah. what we're building. Yeah. They give our customers a compelling reason to go invest in this, even though it's early stages, yeah. and work with those kinds of key applications that are going to be the initial drivers, and then showcase the success and drive the uh, fan out from that. I mean, you know, hockey stick will happen in 26, 27, maybe 27. Mm. But getting initial customers into real platforms show that the platforms are going to be performing at the levels that they're thinking about. That's the challenge between now and the next two years. Well, our in industry is exciting, but it always takes time to deploy, doesn't it? Indeed. <laughs> I mean, you've seen, uh, everybody says things, and everybody almost always uh, overestimates what the adoption cycle is going to look like. Yeah. But having done this a few times now, you kind of learn from yeah. uh, the optimism, enthusiasm that a startup has to have yeah. with the real market you know, challenges. So. That's why the announcement that we made yesterday is a huge one. Okay. The real test is, are there customers who are willing to spend tens of millions of dollars, up to 100 plus million dollars, in deploying your particular platform in their productization plan? If they're doing that, then you know you cross the chasm. Okay. So that's the point we're at. Balaji, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank